You could have a master's or a doctorate degree. You could have a high school education. You could be overweight. You could be underweight. You could be sick. You could be healthy. You could be young. You could be old. It, any skin color, I've seen it on all different people, all different races, all different size, all different shapes, all different diets. Nobody is so special to be excluded from that phenomenon. Well, it takes a little bit of training. I mean, knowledge is the forerunner to experience. So I now know that if you give people the right information, and as, I, as I've said in the past on your show, science is that language, and you can combine the quantum model and the neuroscientific model with neuroplasticity and neuroendocrinology and psychoneuroimmunology and epigenetics and electromagnetism and all those wonderful different branches of science and build a new model of understanding. The person has to be able to explain that model. If they can't explain it, Brian, it's not wired in their brain. So they can't assign meaning to what they're doing. They leave it up to conjecture, they leave it up to hope, they leave it up to wishing, praying, wanting. That's, that's the old model. But when they understand what they're doing and why, and they can articulate it, they're installing the neurological hardware in their brain in preparation for the experience, so they'll understand how to do it better. And, and, and make it so simple right. that it's not about making it complicated. What it's about is eliminating everything else that's not part of the formula. So stop wondering why it hasn't happened. Start a stop analyzing and judging yourself. Stop saying, I can, it's too hard. Those are the very things that are standing in the way between you and your future. So you come up against yourself. Well, what do most people do when they come up against themselves at home in their meditation? They say, I can't meditate. They get up, they get on their cell phone, they quit. They get up, they turn the TV on, they get up, they do whatever have a cup of coffee, whatever. They're, they're, they, they haven't gone past that point because they don't understand that they should. So then when you begin to create a model of understanding and the person can explain it, they're wiring it in their brain. Now, as they install the neurological hardware in their brain, they're priming their brain for the experience. So then you give them the instruction and they can understand what they're doing and why, and you set up the conditions in their environment where they feel safe enough to create. Now we take them to the next level and the experience then begins to change their brain. It begins to change their body. It begins to downregulate certain genes, upregulate other genes. And you may have a good meditation, you may not have one that's so great. But if I said to you, now, Brian, what did you do really well in that last meditation that you love about yourself? Explain that to me. And you can articulate what you did really well. I guarantee you, when it comes time to do it again, you'll do it again. Then if I said to you, if you had another opportunity to do it again, what would you do differently? What would you bring? What would you improve on? What would you work on? And if you can articulate that, I guarantee you, you're gonna become conscious of those unconscious things that you were once unconscious of, and now you're gonna go a little further. And when you stretch a person a little further past that point where they normally stop, that unknown, that's where the magic happens. So in the beginning, you step out into the unknown, it feels uncomfortable, but if you keep applying what you're learning, we've seen this over and over again, and, and for years now, the person gets beyond themselves. There's this kind of dramatic shift that takes place in a collective of a thousand people or 1,500 people. Now the energy in the room's changing, now people are getting it, there's creating more coherence, they're, they're starting to break through, and now give them the opportunity to demonstrate how powerful they really are, and you will be surprised on what you see. And it comes in any shape, any age, any sickness. I mean, you can't tell me you're too sick to do this work any longer. Imagine understanding the science of creation. Now, as I said, it takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of information. We're, we, don't, we don't go for the whole enchilada. We teach people methodically, step by step, on how to build. On every day, they build a little bit more, they build a little bit more, they get a little bit better. Imagine that you do that to such a degree that you understand how to do it all the time. Now, you're not gonna sit down to do the work and be like, oh God, I gotta go create now you're gonna be pretty inspired to create. You're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it. It's going to be something that you look forward to. And that's kind of the thing that I'm proud of uh, when it comes to our community, because we're doers. And people do the work every day because they want the magic to, to be 
sustained. They want it to continue. Uh, and so it's no longer an obligation. It's no longer a need to do it to please God, to do the right thing, to be good, whatever people do it for. This is because they want to keep that kind of crazy world happening. And, 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 if, and if, you're, if you're in the belief system unconsciously, that you're a body, local in space and time and three-dimensional reality, and you're trying to reach your goals and create your vision and do all this stuff, and you're a body, matter trying to change matter, then you have to drag your body through space every single day to get what you want, back and forth to work, whatever. And it's gonna take you time to finally get your goals. That may take you a couple years. Well, that's because you have to think that I have to move my body to go get what I want, so then I gotta compete. I gotta force, I gotta fight for it, I gotta control it, I gotta manipulate, I gotta figure it out. Well, that's what you do with the limited resources when you're a body, local in space and time, trying to create something else, local in space and time. Well, if you're matter, trying to create matter, then you gotta do stuff to make right. it happen. You know, get the skills, get the, you know, get the, you know, all the different things. Well, now you gotta lay down that very thing you used your whole life to get what you want and we learned another way to do it. So then, so now you're back to matter trying to change matter. And so now you're in that three-dimensional world and you can execute there and we can work it out, but it's gonna take time. Well, when you start realizing when you, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And the stronger the emotion you feel when you get angry, the more you're gonna pay attention to that person. You're giving your power to that person. You're giving your life force to that person because that's where your attention is. Well, when you learn how to lower the volume to that emotion, you take your attention off that person. You begin to break your energetic bond with that person. You call energy back to you. Now you have energy to heal. You're building your own electromagnetic field. Now, when you understand the science of creation and you understand it happens in the generous present moment and you're practicing every single day on how to be present, you're not gonna start creating until you know that you're beyond yourself and you're creating in the present moment, you know when you're there and when you're not. And you're creating by changing your energy and you understand when there's a vibrational match between your energy and some potential in the quantum field, you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. You are the magnet, you're drawing the experience. You're collapsing time and space or experiences are coming to you. You understand the science behind that. I guarantee you, that you won't be rushing and competing to get anywhere. Everybody else will be rushing and competing, you'll be doing just the opposite. You'll just be in the present moment, changing your energy, understanding that there's a better way to do it. Now, this is where it gets and exciting. things will come to me Yeah, well. and all of a sudden you start figuring that out. So in traffic, you have two options. You can get frustrated or impatient, or you could be like, well, it was a good time to tune into my future. I'm doing it with my eyes open. I'm gonna fall in love with my future. I'm gonna open my heart. And the side effect of that, is starting to see those changes. You're, every day you're drawing a little closer. Now here's the cool part. We hear stories like this. The, we have coherence healing groups. You know, we have people that understand that if you can begin to change the patterns in the field, you can change matter. It's not matter that emits the field. It's the field that creates matter. If you change the field, you change matter. You don't change the tumor. You change the pattern in the field and the hologram of the tumor changes. So we go in extensive understanding on this. And now we're doing these coherence healings and we're seeing people have instantaneous changes in their health. I mean, instantaneous. Hmm. And so now this group of people say, well, God, if I'm truly in the quantum field, there's no separation. I don't actually have to have the person in front of me that we're healing. I just need a picture or a coordinate and my thought will connect me to them because there's no separation. I'm connected to everything in the unified field. The unified field, the invisible field of energy that collect, connects everything material. If I get there, then I don't need to be in the presence of that person. So we have hundreds of people doing these coherence groups, these, these co-heal groups. And here's a lady that, they, they do them at breakfast and lunch. They call them the hallelujah amens. And if there's a, a child that has leukemia or Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's non lymphoma, if there's someone who has a serious health condition, uh, they, they work with three songs at breakfast. They do one person per song, so they do three people in the morning, and then they do three people at lunch. Well, a lady's driving down the road, and she realizes it's time for the co-heal co -heal session. She pulls over on the side of the road in a neighborhood. She turns her music up. She gets right into it. Next thing you know, she gets a knock on the window and it's a police officer. And the police officer says, rolls, has to roll the window down and says, uh, 
what are you doing? You know, we're getting calls from the neighbors. They think, are you sick? Is something wrong? Is it an emergency? And more importantly, they're wondering, there's children around here if you're safe. And she said, no, 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 no. We do this coherence healing thing. And I was just tuning in to the people and she's got the music blasting. And he leans over to look in the, into the car. And when he leans over, he jumps back. And he looks at her and he said, what just happened? She said, what do you mean? He said, the pain in my back just went away. I don't have, and he goes, I, I was in a lot of pain. I don't have any pain at all. And she said, oh, you were healed into wholeness with love. And she gave him the wink and rolled the window up and psh, took off. And that's the side effect of what could happen in the change of energy. He had direct experience of it. She did nothing. He just entered a coherent field. So you start seeing these unusual things happening. And that you are see having, it all the time. Yeah. That they're becoming the new normal and having an effect. Like, that's how powerful you are.